Okay, this is the first in a series of geopolitical commentary on a broad overview based upon, um, I would say from like 1970s, 1970-ish on at this point. Maybe we'll delve back further uh, from there, but just some of the stuff that I have learned over the years. Now, one of the big players um, since the 1970s is a gentleman, I'll use that term loosely, by the name of Zbigniew Brzezinski. Okay, Zbigniew Brzezinski. Uh, I'll try to maybe put a Wikipedia link up there, although Wikipedia is, you know, biased and not so accurate. But at least you can get some basic information of this Polish-born guy who uh, first... Uh, as far as I know, launched onto the political scene in a big way under Carter. So he was involved, you know, there uh, with Carter. Uh, I would imagine the, the deposed Shah of Iran and the Shah incidents, uh, it, the, uh, you know, peace treaty that was made with uh, Israel and Egypt back then. And then, of course, he faded a little bit into the background, but he had to be active. Um, I guess he probably went into like a CIA type of a situation with, under the uh, Reagan administration and helped because uh, he was a spearhead and he was one of the people that helped with the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. He helped, they, and they are just a, that group is the uh, precursor to the Al Qaeda a group of uh, international Islamic militants. And uh, so he was instrumental in that, uh, bringing down the Soviet Union. So the guy, you know, very powerful guy. Um, if we fast forward through that, then um, after the Soviet Union brought down, one of the things that this, this big new Brzezinski, um, one of his main ideas and, and an idea that he has to promote this one world government uh, that people have been talking about and seem to be happening, and you can even go and uh, you know Google information on that. Several leaders throughout the years talk about this new world order and uh, global governance is another code for it. And, I mean, you could just see that tens of very powerful prime ministers, presidents, and stuff like this discuss this thousand points of light. Uh, Bush talks about the first Bush. So without going into too much detail about that, the main detail of this is microstates. This is the first point I want to bring out about the modern geopolitics. And Zbigniew was the guy who came up with this idea of the microstates. Now, we see this experiment um, first taking hold after uh, he was able to break up uh, the Soviet Union. His first experiment in this was a country called Yugoslavia. Now, Yugoslavia was a country opposite of of uh, Italy. It, it, there's on the eastern side of Italy is called the Adriatic Sea. And on the opposite side of the Adriatic Sea was a country called Yugoslavia. And after the Soviet Union uh, broke up, Yugoslavia, um, I get aided probably by uh, the CIA and Brzezinski's um, plans. Uh, they basically went to Yugoslavia, and there was a lot of ethnic groups in Yugoslavia. So what they did is they started infighting in a war in Yugoslavia that ultimately broke up the country into five distinct little countries. Microstates is what uh, this video is about and what we're talking about here in Yugoslavia. So without going into too much detail, like I'm saying, this video is kind of just to, you know, lay everything out there, throw a little canvas, uh, you know, paint on the canvas, and then, you know, come back and we can look into each of these situations uh, in more detail. But uh, Yugoslavia is broken up to, from the north to the south, now Yugoslavia, nor the northernmost, you know, microstate is Slovenia, then you have Croatia, then Bosnia, Bosnia Herzegovina, then the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, a little piece of the country, now about a third of its original size, and then underneath that, Macedonia. So a country that was one country is now broken up into four. Again, Slovenia in the north, then Croatia, 
Bosnia-Herzegovina in the central, then the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia and Macedonia uh, in the south. So what happened here is the fueling of racial divisions and infighting in the country. So how does this relate to Jews' uh, views and news? Well, it's now this policy is now being uh, put into the Islamic world. And as a Jew, I, I can't, you know, really say that I'm totally disheartened uh, that it's happening because ultimately this is a situation that's going um, against Iran and Iran is perceived as the modern-day Haman. Haman, for those who don't know, is from the Book of Esther. And Haman was a survivor of uh, the nation of Amalek that King Saul did not destroy. Again, don't want to go into too much detail. These things you can all look up yourself. King Saul did not destroy the nation of Amalek. One of the survivors uh, was the forefather of Haman who decided that he was going to kill every single Jew, man, woman, and child uh, under the Persian uh, Empire. So the modern-day Persia is, of course, Iran, and Iran is a big issue. Now, Iran, going back again to Brzezinski, you know, under Carter, the Shah fell. And since Carter in the 70s, now you're talking, you know, 80s is 10, 90s, 2000s, now we're going into... Uh, the 2000 teens. So you're talking about 40 years, um, but what has developed there is an extreme radical government, and there seems to be a situation where now this government needs to be deposed. Of course, they're very powerful. There's 80 million people in Iran, so it's not as easy as Iraq. There was only 18 million people in Iraq, and Afghanistan was a very tribal you know, mountainous area, it's kind of a quagmire for anyone that goes in there, but not a lot of people. It's hard to take over that country, but again, not a lot of people there. But Iran is, a, you know, it's been since Persia, they've been a, a civilization thousands of years. So this is a big situation. Okay, so we can go into the whole, you know, breaking up the world and thousand points of light and all this thing, but this thousand points of light is all of these microstates, as I believe one of the things they're talking about. Okay, so Let's talk about uh, the Islamic countries. So General Wesley Clark, and I'll put the video up, a link to it uh, in the uh, comments here. Maybe I'll even you know, post it up on the screen uh, as well. But General Wesley Clark talked about, and he quoted it saying, we're going to take out seven countries in five years. Now, of course, their plan was grandiose, and it didn't take five years uh, to do it, but this is what Wesley Clark said. He walked into uh, a meeting in the Pentagon. They were talking about taking out seven countries. These countries are Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and then finishing off with Iran. Again, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off with Iran. So, you know, plans do change as time goes by a little bit to a degree. Things have got to change from facts on the ground. But if we look, first of all, at northern Africa, and we can go into the breakup of these countries, you know, there's ethnic groups in these countries, but if you look at northern Africa from west to east, the countries on the north of Africa are Morocco, uh, Algeria, then you have Tunisia, Tunisia, which is like the north um, eastern part of Algeria, right up there in the, in the tip. It's right next to Libya then, of course, Egypt. Then you're wrapping around now uh, to the eastern part of the Mediterranean where you have uh, Israel, Lebanon, and uh, Syria. And then, of course, Turkey. And then you have the European countries uh, above that. Greece, uh, former Yugoslavia is up there just right above Greece. You have Italy, France, Spain. Okay. Well, we're focusing on the countries in northern Africa, Tunisia, Libya, and Egypt. These countries have been thrown into turmoil. And they are a ring that, you know, could ultimately come against Israel, which is, the Israel is like a spearhead of the military-industrial complex of the West. Uh, we happen to uh, use 
and uh, test a lot of the weapon systems. We happen to perfect a lot of the weapon systems uh, that the Americans come up with. Um, and we are uh, basically a pawn of the military industrial complex. Okay, so General Clark talked about deposing these countries. Uh, now, of course, Sudan is a little bit south and Somalia. Um, if you look at Sudan and Somalia, they are basically uh, across from Saudi Arabia and really not a factor into uh, an ultimate situation going on in, in Iran other than they can be terror factories or whatever the case may be. But, you know, really uh, retaliation against Israel, which would be perceived as the, you know, the little Satan, as they call it, the little Satan uh, of the West, uh, Iran would really, you know, try to punish um, Israel the most uh, out of all of it. Now, I don't have time to go into the sandwich uh, that America has created and the West has created uh, against Iran. But if you look uh, on a map, you'll see uh, Iran is right in the middle of Afghanistan on its east border and Iraq on its western border. So with the fact that westernized countries are in Afghanistan and Iraq, you know, it does uh, pose uh, to Iran, you know, a situation of why they would want to have nukes. And I'm not justifying their nukes or their program or anything like that. But, you know, if I was Iranian and I played it from the opposite side, the devil's advocate side, we could clearly see why Iran would go for nuclear weapons. They see American troops on both of their borders, both east and west. And, you know, uh, this could be a concern. It would be a concern if I was uh, Iranian or in Iran. And again, I just don't justify their actions, but this is a situation that's causing uh, the term blowback. Okay. So, Wesley Clark talked about the breakup of these countries. It's now wrapped around uh, from Tunisia, which is a little country, easy to, to uh, cause chaos there, to Libya, which was... Uh, a bigger country. Uh, now we see uh, the fact that Mubarak was deposed in Egypt. Uh, it seems like both Libya and Egypt didn't want to go along uh, with plans uh, for further destabilization, destabilization of the region. And I'm not defending either of these dictators, uh, but again, uh, they did keep their countries moderately quiet. Uh, and, but they were probably threats to Israel as the Iranian offensive will, can, you know, begin at some point. Okay, so then we go now next to uh, Israel, and currently there is a situation in Syria uh, that is destabilizing that country, and that's probably the ultimate chip, uh, the ultimate uh, little domino that needs to fall uh, for the full uh, out offensive into Iran. Because Syria is right, if you look on a map, again, you know, these are things we'll have to look at in further videos. Uh, but if you look at a map, you'll see that Syria is quite a large country compared to Israel, right on the north of Israel, connected to Israel through the Golan Heights, which uh, Israel took, uh, you know, from Syria uh, in a past war. And these are situations that, uh, you know, Israel needs to really much uh, be on the lookout for uh, when the situation in Iran, the offense into Iran, uh, does take place at some point in time. So this is a general overview um, of microstate uh, situation. Uh, they're talking about Syria being broken up into three microstates, uh, an Alawite a portion, a Sunni portion, and a Shiite portion. Shiite portion would be in the north. Uh, the Alawite portion, which is another form of Islam, uh, they would be uh, in the north and the east, I believe, and then the Sunni portion in the south. Uh, Sunni uh, Muslims are basically, I, I, I think of it as sun, if you want to think sun, Sunni, Saudi Arabia, desert. So this is their base, is the Sunni Muslims. The Shiite Muslims, their base is Iran. So as you can see in uh, Syria, you do have the loyalty there uh, to Iran as well. And those could be the three microstates uh, that the country will be broken up into. And of course, also you could see in Lebanon as well, um, a quasi microstate. I mean, the country is small enough to be a microstate itself, but even a microstate within a microstate, you have a Hezbollah 
uh, controlling a portion of the country. So there you have it, folks, the first uh, video in this series. Have a great day.